Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos, Robert Fisher, and the Baghdad Batteries. Tales of Hauntings, Murder, and Scary Mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of uniquely terrifying true stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. For this week, we focus on a former firefighter turned fugitive and the existence of one of the most baffling ancient devices ever discovered. Get ready for Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos. Number 1. Robert Fisher On April 10, 2001, at 8.42 a.m., a small neighborhood in Scottsdale, Arizona was rocked by a giant blast. The Fisher family home had exploded and was engulfed in flames in just a matter of minutes. Houses along the street shook and rattled, and the plume of smoke it produced could be seen for miles. When firefighters arrived on the scene, the home was a giant ball of fire, and there was nothing they could do to save it. When the fire was finally extinguished, though, that's when authorities uncovered a gruesome sight. Three people were found dead, their bodies charred inside their bedrooms, but upon closer examination, 38-year-old Mary Fisher had had her throat slit and a single bullet was fired into the back of her head. Mary's children, Brittany, who was 12, and Bobby, who was 10, had also had their throats cut. Every one of the bodies were found in their beds. The only person missing from the family was husband and father, Robert. Born in Brooklyn, New York, Robert Fisher's parents divorced when he was 15 years old. This took a heavy toll on the teenager and throughout his adult life. Robert was also aware of this to the point where he shared with a co-worker how he felt his life would have been different had his mother never left. For work, Robert enlisted in the U.S. Navy and later on married Mary. He was a surgical catheter technician, a firefighter, and a respiratory therapist. An avid outdoorsman, he loved being outside and regularly hunted and fished, but many of those who knew him said Robert had a darker side to him as well. He was cruel and distant to his kids. In fact, people admitted he was an awkward father and was closer to his dog than his own children. Ginny Cooper, his mother-in-law, said he didn't even socialize with the family because he feared of getting too close to them and then losing them. Even more, he was known to be a control freak, often making even the smallest of decisions for his family, including what his children would wear. It wasn't surprising to those around them that the couple could end up having marital troubles. Although the family was initially active members of the Scottsdale Baptist Church, Robert started withdrawing from activities months before the murders. Back in 1998, he told a co-worker he had an affair with a prostitute and was so scared his wife would find out. He said he couldn't live without his family, hinting he might opt for suicide over getting a divorce. And this talk of divorce might have actually been the trigger for the triple murder. Mary's friend said the couple had been having a lot of arguments and issues over the course of their marriage. And weeks prior to the murders, Mary told friends she was going to divorce Robert once and for all. It's believed that after an argument on April 9th, Mary told Robert she wanted a divorce. Then that evening, Fisher waited for all three to fall asleep before he killed Mary and slit the children's throats. Then he cut the gas line in the back of the house and left a candle lit. Once gas accumulated, that's when the explosion occurred. This gave Fisher enough time, approximately 10 hours, to leave and make a run for it. On April 14, 2001, an official manhunt began for Fisher as he was named a person of interest in the case. By April 20th, Mary's Toyota 4Runner was found and the dog Blue was inside. The truck was taken to the Tonto National Forest close to Young, Arizona. Police believed Robert went into the forest and hid in the area, hoping to evade authorities. However, reports later surfaced that many of the caves in the area weren't searched thoroughly during the initial investigation. Professional cavers suggest Robert may have hidden these caves before he either escaped once and for all, died from exposure or lack of oxygen, or even killed himself. By July 19th, Fisher was declared a fugitive and charged with three counts of first-degree murder and arson. Then the following year, in 2002, he was considered among the FBI's most wanted. The FBI currently offers a $100,000 reward for any information leading to his arrest. 
In 2016, the FBI rebooted the investigation, starting from scratch, to make sure they didn't miss anything. Many think Fisher is still alive somewhere and could have assumed a new identity. Several age-progressed images have also been released to help people identify him now that he's older. Robert Fisher was described as six foot one and about 190 pounds when he disappeared. He had blue eyes and brown hair with surgical scars on his lower back. He's still considered armed and dangerous. Number two, the Baghdad batteries. A clay pot measuring just six inches seems like the most unlikely thing to change history, but in the case of what is dubbed as the Baghdad battery, it might be doing just that. It was 1938 when several unusual clay pots were found in an excavation site in the old village of Kajut Rabu, close to Baghdad. The village is said to be 2,000 years old and was created around the Parthian period, around 250 BC to 224 AD. The pots were made from terracotta, and inside was a piece of rolled copper. Then inside the copper was a thin rod of iron. The unusual vessel showed some sort of corrosion, and early tests confirmed that an acidic agent like vinegar or wine may have been present before. For some time, the small unusual pots stayed in storage because archaeologists weren't sure what they were. That is, until German archaeologist Willem Koenig suggested a controversial theory. He examined the unusual pots and proposed that they could be ancient electric batteries. Koenig observed it's possible the pots were used as a galvanic cell for electroplating either silver or gold items. If proven real, it could predate the invention of the electrochemical cell by more than 1,000 years. By 1940, an engineer from General Electric's High Voltage Laboratory Willard Gray tested Koenig's theory. He replicated the battery setup using a copper sulfate solution, and according to his test, it generated half a volt of electricity. Another experiment hoping to prove the functionality of the battery was then done in the 70s, this time by German Egyptologist Arne Egbrecht. He also rebuilt the Baghdad battery, but used freshly pressed grape juice as he speculated the ancients might have used. With his replica, he said he created 0.87 volts of electricity, which he then used to electroplate a small silver statuette with gold. However, many experts have disputed his experiment and were unable to replicate it. What's more is no written papers about it have been found and no photos were used to document it. Hence, it's no surprise that many are skeptical whether the experiment ever even happened. Even the well-known show Mythbusters also tried seeing if the Baghdad battery works. They were successful in reproducing some of the earlier experiments, but in a rare instance, they concluded the concept to be plausible instead of busting the myth or confirming it. While there's no doubt the setup can generate small volts of electricity, many are still unsure what these batteries could have been used for. It's speculated that several batteries could have been connected to one another in order to power a stronger device. Some even say that in Egypt it was used to light items like the so-called Dendera Bell, another controversial artifact. The real function of the batteries remains a question though. There are others who go back even further, asking that if these ordinary looking pots did function like a battery, where did the technology come from? Scientists suggest maybe Persians developed the battery without realizing the principles behind it. This was common then, and some devices were created without people potentially grasping the science behind it. Because of the confusion and mystery surrounding the use of the batteries, many archaeologists and historians default to suggesting that these aren't batteries at all, but jars used to seal papyrus or other important documents. Regardless of the truth, the enigma of the Baghdad battery continues and it's one of the many ancient devices that still mystifies people today. So there were two of the most killer and ancient stories around. The world can be a crazy place, and Twisted Twos is sure to show you why. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to our channel. We have new videos coming out every Wednesday and Saturday that we know you'll love. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.